Hi everyone, Eric here. Uh, I had got a video request um, from my uh, CEO of My Chemical Romance. Shout out to you, girl. Thank you for constantly commenting on my videos. I want you to know that I appreciate you, and um, I'm praying for all of my subscribers every day. You're always on my mind. Um, I don't know who each of you are individually, but I want you to know that um, I care about you. I'm glad you take the time to watch my videos. To me, that's really important, and I just hope that they help you. So she had left a comment asking oh, me to, to discuss uh, the arrogance of INFJs, something that we've all encountered, I'm sure. And um, it's a pretty big topic. She actually made some subtopics that I can't quite cover in this video, but I can lay the groundwork. And I think um, asking any questions following this video might be a little bit easier. Uh, so if you have any more questions, want me to continue talking about this, more in detail about specifics, please comment below and I will make a follow-up video. So, first thing I want to note is uh, the arrogance of INFJs is something that we do to ourselves. Um, we use this arrogance as a means to isolate our own hearts. We'll become very puffed up and very proud and um, now this doesn't happen all the time. Usually it's a direct result of us being hurt by someone or something, um, or uh, somebody else doesn't listen to us. We'll try to give a suggestion or advice, and it'll just be like they're, they're not following us in regards to RNI. They aren't on the same page as us, and we get so frustrated because we're tired of trying to explain ourselves, and we're tired, I mean, we lose patience with people um, to the point where we allow our arrogance to say, you know what, whatever. And uh, they'll say, well, I'm just trying to help you. No, I, I don't care. I don't care what you're trying to do. Well, geez, you don't have to be such a jerk about it. I don't really care what you think. Just, just go away. Just go away. And it's at this point in INFJ, if you go back and watch my previous videos, how you know you've ticked off an INFJ, or how to know that you've uh, got it on the INFJ's bad side, the signs that we're angry with you, we'll begin showing those signs. Um, but the, the, the question I have to ask is, why do we get so impatient? It's not really a matter of arrogance. I mean, certainly that's part of the problem. But if we ask the question, why? Do we get why do we become so arrogant and it's not like it's always happening it's like we're always ready to snap on the next person we're prepared to be shut down so we just stop altogether we are ready for that net for that next person to tell us that we're wrong and to say well i think you should i didn't ask what you think you say geez eric that's that's kind of harsh why would you why would you want to connect with someone if you don't even care what they have to say now don't misunderstand me I'm not saying that I do this. I'm not saying that this happens all the time. I'm saying when an INFJ gets in these mood swings, and it's honestly something we have to deal with. Don't take it personally. It's not you, it's us. It really is us. That's not some cliche excuse I'm trying to use on you. I'm being 100% serious. It's us. We are our own worst enemy and we do it to ourselves. Um, and, be and before I get ahead of myself, let me just stop and say, that I'm not attacking anyone in this video, I'm just answering questions. It's hard to hear the answers, especially whenever you're already angry or upset or someone's hurt you. I get it, believe me, I've been hurt. I have lived my life hurting, all right? I understand completely. So just bear with me, understand I'm not attacking you, I'm just answering questions. And if you don't like my, an my answers, compare them with someone else, actually get some feedback. But don't hammer me just because I'm making a YouTube video to help people out. It may not help you fine, but don't, don't, what, what's the word? Um, don't, don't let out all of your frustration on me. If you're angry and hurt too, fine. Make, make a comment and ask me to talk about something specific and I'll talk about your question. But right now this is about why INFJs get arrogant. And to get to this, I really have to lay the groundwork for what leads up to it. Before this happens, we are prepared and expecting to be shut down. And it is at this point that we say to ourselves, you know what, rather than go through the hassle of being shut down again and having this person tell me what they think and give me their two cents, I'm just gonna forget about it. They're gonna be kept out of distance. I don't care what they have to say. I don't wanna hear what they have to say. It doesn't matter what they have to say. What they have to say is irrelevant because my and I already understands what they're going to say before they say it. I see how this is going to play out and I'm not doing it again. That's, that's what leads up to us thinking this way. We think my and I knows. I know, I understand, and I'm not going to go to them with a question 
just to try to connect with them whenever they don't even understand and think like I do. And it's at this point that you have to understand that our own knowledge puffs us up. All right, there's a very wise quote that says, knowledge puffs up itself, but a heart of love edifies the people it ministers to. And yes, that is a religious quote, but it's very, very true. If we're not careful, our own knowledge puffs us up. Because listen, RNI gives us so much information, we can look at a crowd of people and start reading them. And that's rare. That is incredibly rare in the world. And for us to not be connected with people who under who are who understand inter introverted intuition when we feel like we're not understood we become so proud so fast because we're so hurt and we're so misunderstood and we just want to be misunderstood and the frustration cycling through our t i n i t i n i it's not a loop it's a cycle it goes t n i f e t i n i f e t i and we stop right there our introverted intuition goes off. We understand. This is how they're going to react. We can't connect with them. Our FE goes off. But I want to connect with them. And now we're frustrated. Then our TI goes off. But they're not going to understand what I'm trying to say. Then our NI goes off. All right, well, maybe if, nope, 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 bad situation. And we run out every scenario in our head. And we get to the point where we put up our own walls without even giving the other person a chance. The thought never crosses our mind. Maybe they can learn if I was just patient enough to help them understand. Listen, guys. Yes, we're rare. Yes, we are incredibly great at reading body language. Yes, it is true. Other people are not as good as we are. But it is also true. We don't help people to understand that. Is everyone willing? No. Are a lot of people willing? Yes. Are they all willing right away? Usually not. Usually people are pretty debatable and pretty hot-headed and are very quick to just feel, well, I don't think so. I didn't ask if you thought. You asked what I thought. So listen to what I have to say. I don't care what you have to say because what you care what we, you have to say isn't important right now. You asked me to explain myself to you. So stop refuting me and arguing and just shut up and listen. Oh, people do this so frequently to me. Um, but anyways, getting back on track. Our arrogance comes from one key factor pain, rejection, and not being misunderstood. Finally, frustration intermingling with all three allows us to realize with our TI what we under, or understand with our TI what we know with our NI. The problem with this is our FE gets locked out because it's focused on how we feel. And that is incredibly normal because we feel like we want to help people and connect with them. So we naturally are led by our FE. But the problem is our FE supplements our NI and our TI examines our NI and FE. So if we're so stuck on how we feel and us wanting to be understood and us wanting to be acknowledged and us wanting to be validated and us wanting to be listened to and us not listening to somebody else for a change, and us wanting to be able to tell people how we feel and how and, and, and what's going on through our head. And whenever they don't listen, it makes us feel like we're not valued. And we're so focused on how we feel that we put up these walls of arrogance. And nope, don't care what you have to say because you don't care what I have to say. It doesn't matter if you would care what I have to say in two hours. I'm not going to give you two hours of my time until you give me your time first. Not having it. It's this arrogance, this pride in knowledge that puffs us up to the point where we're not even considerate and kind about other people anymore. It happens on a very deep emotional level, and the solution is simple. You have to choose to love people. If you don't, you're never going to let these balls down. And if you do, you're going to put them back up. The moment you're more focused on how you feel versus extroverted feeling how other people will feel, you're going to run into this problem. Is it that easy a solution, Eric, you might ask? You might say, is it really that simple to just choose to love people and fla, all the problems are gone and all the pride and all the pain? No, that is not what I'm saying. Yes, you have to learn to validate yourself. You have to find your self-value from, from not, not from other people. 
All right, you have to find a foundation that's firm and solid and won't be shaken even whenever you're shaken. And until you have that, you're going to struggle, always. And I can't tell you that I've stopped struggling. I still do, and I still struggle with this problem. But what I can tell you is when you find someone who pours back into you, one person, I found that one person, Gabriel, I found that one person, everything becomes easier. When you have one person who understands you and who understands your NI, and believe me, Gabriel didn't understand me with a snap of the finger. It took a lot of time. I had to explain myself. I still do. He still asks me questions sometimes and says, ah, interesting, so that's how you think. He's learning about me. It's a process of bonding with someone. You learn about people. Yes, R and I lets us read people and we understand them so well, usually better than they understand themselves. But they don't understand us. And you know what? I guarantee you that as you begin talking with them, you're going to see sides of them you don't know. And listen, we know so much that we feel like and think like we know people better than they know themselves 95% of the time, and usually we do. But we don't know people as deeply as we feel like we do. It's that pride and that arrogance that causes all of these problems. The golden rule is basically this. It doesn't matter if your NI has gone off and you feel like you've known someone, you don't know their past. You don't know what caused them to feel the way that they did, and you don't know them as an individual or what they can become just because you know them in the moment. One glance at someone, yeah, you can read people's body language, but you cannot read their heart, their emotional value, or their intentions, and to just shrug them off like they can't learn, that's really, really where the arrogance comes from. I had to give Gabriel my time. I had to give him my heart. I had to give him a chance. And you know what? I blocked him out a couple of times. And every time he said, I don't understand why you're doing this. And it took a lot of time for me to realize how arrogant I was being and to learn. I had to learn to socialize differently. And I had to learn people don't think the way that I do. Gabriel taught me that lesson. And he's still here by my side. And you know what? I'm grateful for that because I'm a changed person today. It takes one person to, to understand you, to start letting you heal. This arrogance will not, will not go away until you are loved. But you cannot be loved the way that you are seeking in your heart until you help someone understand you. Another INFJ can't give you the love that you need because you can't give them the love that they need. We can't give it to each other and then suddenly... Ta-da, it's, it's a happy paradise, and us INFJs all live together like one big happy family. It doesn't work. We're still going to get on each other's nerves. We're individual people. If you're a man and I'm a woman, and you're an INFJ, and I'm, I'm an INFJ, it doesn't matter how good I can read you. I still don't know why you do the things you do sometimes. You're still going to get on my nerves. People still get on my nerves. It doesn't matter who they are. All right, we're, we're easily agitated people because we crave our, our own personal time alone and we crave social interaction. We're a paradox, okay? You're always going to be have feelings of being agitated. It's not going away. But when you choose to love regardless, the healing can begin. And it starts by choosing despite that agitation to not act on it. I feel agitated right now while I'm making this video. The thoughts of socializing with someone and the thought of being alone irks me. It's something I have to live with. And until I somehow reach the, the, the epitome of self-value, I don't think I'm ever going to get, get these feelings are ever going to leave. So I'm in it for the long haul. But you know what? I'm not in it alone anymore. And that's the important thing. Where does our arrogance come from? Honestly, it's something we struggle with. Our arrogance comes from, one, being so gifted with reading people because NI dominant, FE supplement, and TI analyzing both. We're, we're naturally good at reading people. That pride and that knowledge of knowing that we're good at something and other people aren't is where our arrogance really comes from. But the arrogance becomes a problem when we allow it to affect us. I've, this is the end of the video. You got it.